So let's get started. Uh, so OTA is actually an application which is provided as a as a source in the WB cube cube package. So it's ready to be modified and customized by anyone. Uh, it resides at the very bottom of the flash and it occupies about 24 kilobyte. And there are three main purposes uh, to update the application or just a part of it. So it can be, for example, a configuration data that you want to change. And of course, it's also possible to upgrade the RF stack when needed. So there are two ways to do this currently. Uh, you can use the STBLE uh, sensor. This app is on GitHub, uh, also in source. Uh, so you can carry out the firmware upgrade with your phone. A second way to do this is, is with another STM32WB. So to make it work, you flash the, the OTA clients with so-called transparent mode. And this communicates with the Cube Monitor RF running on your computer. And Cube Monitor RF can do many different things. Uh, it can access the uh, low, the ACI commands of of the of the uh, Bluetooth stack, but in this particular use case, we are only interested in the OTA. So let's have a look uh, more technically on how it works. Uh, it's in important to understand the memory mapping and the interactions between the individual firmwares. So uh, WB is a dual core with with a single bank single bank flash. Uh, so the the area dedicated for M0 and 0 plus is uh, secured, which means M the user core the M4 cannot cannot read it, cannot delete it, cannot uh, write to it, write to this. So the user the user section starts from the bottom and ends at the security barrier. So at the bottom we have the OTA application, so this is the firmware executed after, after reset. And the first thing it does, it searches if there is a valid application and it searches, searches for the OTA request. Uh, if, there, if, it finds, if it finds no OTA request, it will be simply bypassed. So it jumps, so it jumps to the application and then the application is executed. Now what is an OTA, OTA request? Uh, OTA request is a uh, is a way for the user app to call the OTA, and that's uh, that's done in a very simple way. Uh, the OTA request, which is just uh, a word uh, in SRAM, the first memory address of SRAM, that's where we put the OTA request, and then a system reset is generated. So after reset, the OTA boots. It checks the command because the SRAM retains retains the value between resets, and it proceeds accordingly. So this is this is how it's done. So let's uh, imagine a scenario when actually there is an OTA request. So when this happens, the OTA uh, application will initialize the Bluetooth and it will start advertising. And it's now ready to be connected by the OTA client, which can be your phone, which can be any other device. OTA is actually a Bluetooth proprietary service in this particular use case. So it's a service with three characteristics. Uh, there is a characteristics for uh, defining the base address where we want to flash the data. There is a characteristic for the uh, exchange of the raw binary data. And once this is, once all the data have been, have been uh, transferred, then there's an indication back to the OTA client saying that the upload finished successfully. Okay, let's let's talk uh, about the application first. So, what is what are the necessary steps to integrate the OTA into into the uh, into the your user application? So, most obviously, uh, it needs to be linked uh, above the OTA. Uh, but from the BLE perspective, it's necessary to do two things. Uh, for the BLE service, for the custom BLE service, we need to add a special characteristic which is called an OTA reboot characteristic. And this is integrated into any service, any BLE service uh, you can imagine. Uh, the second thing is uh, changing the advertising. So let's talk, let's talk about these two things separately. So this is uh, a simple example. Let's imagine the user 
user application is a heart rate. So it's a very simple, very simple Bluetooth service, which is actually adopted by, by Bluetooth SICK. It has two characteristics. One a compulsory one is the measurement. So this is the actual heart rate value, which is sent to, so sent to the phone or your wrist, uh, wrist uh, health meter. Then there is a characteristic that specifies the position of the sensor on your body. And now what's important, if, if we want an OTA to integrate OTA into this, into this uh, service, we add an OTA reboot request characteristic. So in there, when, we, when the client writes into this characteristic, he can request the OTA, the OTA application, which will generate a reset after afterwards. We can also specify here uh, which area in the flash will be erased. So because we need to free space uh, when we need to upgrade, then here we can do this. We can s select which sector, uh, which is the beginning sector of flash and how many sectors we want to delete to free up space for the new version of the application. So regarding uh, the advertising, the OTA capability is also advertised and this is done by a special proprietary advertising structure. This is described in the SDBLE Blue SD protocol. So in there, there is a feature mask which uh, is indicating what the device is capable of. So there are, according to this, according to this standard, uh, there are many bit fields related uh, to, to sensors, but was what interests us the most is the OTA, OTA reboot bit. So this is how the, the phone immediately knows, knows from the advertising content that this device is capable of OTA. So let's have a look at the, at the flow of the OTA. So let's keep in mind the heart rate uh, supporting OTA. When the phone sees the advertising content, he already knows it will support OTA. When it connects, it will perform the service and characteristic discovery. It finds the OTA reboot characteristic. So it writes to it and immediately a reset is generated. So the OTA application boots, it will erase the area in the flash which we tell it to erase. After that, it will start advertising and the phone can connect again. Then there is the process of exchanging the data of the raw, of the raw binary and storing that into, into the flash. And once this is done, the target sends an indication that the upload has finished. Another reset is generated, OTA, OTA uh, reboots. It finds a valid application, so it's bypassed, that's the end. So before we go to the first hands-on, uh, just a few words about uh, the firmware which is running on the M0 Plus. So it's uh, obviously the RS Techs. It can be Bluetooth, can be Thread, can be Zigbee, but it can also be FUS, the firmware upgrade services. So the stacks uh, are provided by SG in an encrypted form. So there must be a firmware which decrypts it and install it. And this is the purpose of S FUS. So in fact, when you upgrade, when you want to upgrade the wireless stack, uh, there are three options. You can use a system bootloader. USB or UART, you can use an OTA, and you can use also a JTAG. The first, it's actually a process which has two steps. So firstly, we need to store the encrypted binary in the flash, and then we need a code, a firmware, which calls the FUS services, and the M0 Plus will do the rest. So this firmware can again be a system bootloader, it can be OTA, it can be, it can be a custom apl application uh, downloaded by, J by JTAG. Uh, 